to now uh, consider the words of, uh, of Arsalan Iftikhar. He is uh, amongst the most repulsive people I have ever encountered. The New York Times, however, uh, calls uh, uh, him, uh, the world needs more Muslim Gandhis like uh, this uh, imbecile. Uh, it is a, uh, a man that has been on uh, the BBC. Uh, he uh, has uh, appeared in the Washington Post. He is a special reporter for uh, CNN. He is amongst the most repulsive, most disingenuous, most dishonest men alive today. He is, in every word, despicable. He is an international human rights lawyer, the founder of the MuslimGuy.com and an adjunct professor of religious studies at DePaul University in Chicago. He uh, writes, Hey, Boko Haram, have you read the Quran lately? By the way, Boko Haram was founded by an Islamic cleric. It is currently run by an Islamic cleric. The cleric of Boko Haram is more aware of what the Quran says than is the Muslim guy. He begins, most of the 1.6 billion Muslims in the world have read the Quran, and we're utterly certain that it condemns kidnapping young girls and selling them into slavery. No matter what you say, Allah tells you. Let me read from the Quran's uh, 33rd surah, picking the story up in the 26th verse. Allah is uh, talking about the uh, raid on uh, the third Jewish community in, uh, in Yathrib, today's uh, Medina. The first uh, Jewish community was expelled. Their homes were stolen. The second uh, Jewish community uh, was uh, attacked. Uh, they were killed. The third Jewish community, the men were murdered. The women were raped. And the children were sold into slavery. This is the Quran's reporting on that event. Quran. 3326. Muslim guy, you may want to listen to this. Allah took down the people of the scripture book. He's talking about Jews. He cast terror into their hearts because the Islamic God is a terrorist. Some you slew. Yeah, the men. They cut off their heads one at a time. 900 of them on one day, one at a time, marching them before their women and children, their wives, their mothers, and slicing off their heads before Muhammad, on Muhammad's orders. Some you slew, and some you made prisoners. Well, if you can't imprison women, why is Allah saying that you made them prisoners? And he made you heirs to their lands, in other words, you stole them. But Allah facilitated the theft. He made you inherit their houses. Yeah, you stole them. And their goods, yeah, you stole that too. Giving you a land which you had not transversed before. Allah has powers over all things. Ishaq chronicles the event. Then the apostle, we're speaking of Muhammad, divided the property. Talk about these, these, the same Jewish community that they had just killed the men. In fact, there is a, a depiction of it. It says the Jews were made to come down and Allah's messengers imprisoned them. Then the prophet went into the marketplace at Medina. Still the marketplace today, this reads. And he had trenches dug in it. He then sent for the Jewish men and he had them beheaded in those trenches. They were brought out to him in batches. They numbered 800 to 900 boys and men. So if the boys and men are decapitated, lying in trenches filled with blood at Muhammad's feet, who do you suppose are the captives? Girls? Good guess. Then, then Allah's apostle divided the property, the wives and the children. These would be girl children. 
Allah divided the property, the wives and the children of the Koreza, that's the Jewish community, among the Muslims. Allah's messenger took his fifth of the booty. He made known on that day that the extra shares were for horses and their riders. The prophet selected from himself among the Jewish women of the Koreza, Rahana, Bet Amur. She became his concubine. When he possessed her, she was still in his possession. The messenger of Allah took her as a captive. She showed herself adverse to Islam, and she insisted on Judaism. He raped her. That's the truth, Muslim guy. Why aren't you willing to tell it? Because you get paid? Because you get lavish praise for lying? What are you when you lie on behalf of kidnappers of little girls? When you lie and try to exonerate the very religion that has caused these men to kidnap these girls, to rape them, to torture them, and now to slay, sell them as sex slaves. You're no better than they are. Now I want to tell you, it isn't appropriate as a radio host to become indignant. But I'll tell you folks, when little girls are being raped, by a gang of religious zealots, and you have the likes of Arsalan Iktavar as the voice of the Muslim guy exonerating the religion that caused this to occur. If you are not righteously indignant, there's something morally wrong with you. This is the only response to this idiot. Proud as he is with his scarf and his handsome rugged good looks. He is repulsive. Can I, can I ask you something here, Yana? You go right ahead. Okay. Uh, By the way, go to the MuslimGuy.com and look at this. No, I, I, this, I am. I'm, I'm this, reading it. This is despicable. And, and here we have this prick. He wins an award from Washington University School of Law in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, he has documentaries out there on NPR. Mm -hmm. he, he does shows with the award-winning Christian Amanpour. Uh, and, and, of course, you know, you pointed out his Time Magazine cover story on Islamophobia, no less. Yes. I guess there's really, I guess it's like homophobia. There's an Islamic person, and they're just dying to get out and become one. You know, it's it's a strange thing to me. It isn't strange to me that a, uh, uh, an Islamic scumbag like this would perpetrate lies. What's amazing to me is that the Western media picks it up and advances it. CNN, and these are the, the BBC, BBC, Al Jazeera, at, the Today really Show, the Today Show, National Public Radio, Fox News Channel, MSNBC, the Associated Press, C-SPAN, Voice of America, USA Today, NBC Nightly News, The Washington Post, ABC World News Tonight, The Los Angeles Times, CBS News, The New York Times, Rolling Stone, Time Magazine, The Economist, and Newsweek Magazine all have featured this repulsive liar. What's wrong with us? Do we have an entire nation of idiots? who have lost the ability to think, who no longer care to do a little investigation so that they might know enough information to actually form a just conclusion? We all don't. Does no one in this world have a backbone anymore? Are we unwilling to stand up to, to evil? What's going on here? Yeah, yeah, what they're going to do... What they're going to do is there's, there's going to be a, a stake right now, the heart of this country, and it's going to say the West was killed by political correctness. That's the end of it. That's well, it. That's all there is. Well, there. actually, the guys. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, this. Well, this one. Uh, well, this fellow might be pandering to the uh, semi-literate, 
pseudo-intellectual, you know, pseudo-intellectuals of the left, um, a comparatively small number of people are exposed to him compared to the number of people who are, are exposed to LL Cool J's character, Sam Hanna, in the very popular TV series, NCIS LA. And right. So what you have there is a black American male, very macho, muscular, ripped, oh, yeah. and really nice guy, conscientious, backs his partner, scrupulously moral, and very much Muslim, and functions often to interact with Muslims in um, in the plots and the shows where he has to be undercover. So yeah, but the show doesn't actually declare. The, uh, the show doesn't actually declare that he is a Muslim, and the show will actually deny that he is a Muslim. It just has the, it has him speaking Arabic and quoting the Quran as if he is Muslim, and he routinely quotes Quran 5:32 uh, out of context, where he says, uh, "You know, you, you Muslims, you, you, as a Muslim, you can't want to kill because the Quran says if you take one life, it's as if you killed all of humanity." <laughs> And, and what they and what they don't recognize, of course, they don't bother to do any investigation, is that 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 that, that particular line was not only plagiarized from the Jewish Talmud, but it is only speaking of Jews. It is that that line is Jews. If you kill one person, it's as if you killed all humanity. And then it goes on to uh, to speak to Muslims in the next verse and says, when you hear such stuff then you're to crucify those people. And you're to cut off an arm and a, and a leg on opposite sides, and, and you are to imprison them. Right. And so, you know, it, but that character cites that line all the time. And you're right. Yeah, yeah but, but, but that goes to show that what they're really trying to do is advance Islam. And let, let me say yeah. something here. I, I just want to point To exonerate the killers, to exonerate the kidnappers, to exonerate the rapists. There were something like 200 million Africans taken out of Africa. 388,000, by the way, were taken on boats transatlantic to the U.S. Right. The 14 million, 4.5 million, went went to Brazil. I, uh -huh. I, I, I want to point this out, though. 95% were marched into Islamic countries. And they yes. were actually, the majority, used as sex slaves. Not yes. the majority, because the majority died on the way. It was something like a right. 90% right. kind of death. Correct. Uh, the point is that the Arabs have no love, none, for the blacks. None. No. No. So we'll, we'll talk about what happened in the Sudan. Let's just make the comparison. It was Arab Muslims who led that country in their genocidal massacre of African animists and African Christians, killing 2.5 million of them. They're racist on top of being sexist. All right, so we began with the Muslim guy, uh, the professor at uh, DePaul University in Chicago, telling us that he was asked that he and 1.6 billion Muslims all over the world are absolutely, utterly, he used, certain that the Quran condemns kidnapping of young girls and selling them into slavery, no matter what you say, Allah says. And we cited from the 33rd chapter of the Quran and also the uh, the um, contemporary hadith from Muhammad and his companions to tell you that's exactly what they did. And it wasn't just that they kidnapped the little girls and sold them into slavery, but they also raped their mothers and they murdered their brothers and their fathers. That's what the Quran says, Muslim guy. But he would go on. As he quotes from the leader of Boko Haram that accurately reflected what the Quran advocates, he um, said, as a Muslim human rights lawyer, it is obscene and absolutely un-Islamic for these lunatic human traffickers to invoke the name of God while kidnapping young girls and threatening to sell them into sexual slavery. The leaders of Boko Haram have clearly never read the Holy Quran, which states quite clearly that, quote, oppression is worse than murder, end quote, 2, 191. And that nobody, quote, shall force girls to commit prostitution, in quote, 2433. 
Now, if you want to know why I'm so damn angry today, and why this anger is appropriate, and that you should feel it as well, because if you don't hate this individual, if you don't hate the Muslim guy, if you don't despise CNN for presenting his views, if you don't hate the religion he is promoting, then you're incapable of genuine love. You know, Yada, I, I want to, I, I, to Larry, before I say this, I want to, and I want to give you this, the opportunity, I want to turn to Quran 2191 and Quran 233 and to read to you what they actually say. But go ahead, Larry, before I do. Well, I don't think he's so poorly read that he doesn't understand that Muhammad was a child molesting slave trader because that's what he did for a living. Yeah, but I right. think what it's, why, it's why, by the way, he doesn't say the kid, that slave trade is inappropriate because he knows that Muhammad was a slave trade. He didn't say that terrorism was inappropriate because the Quran is filled with examples of terrorism. I read one of them in Quran 5. Yeah, I, I, I went Quran 33. Yeah. yeah, but in Bukhari, verse uh, 7b67 and 427, I, I think he's emulating the prophet here because he said, the prophet said, if I take an oath and later find something else better than that, then I do what is better and I expiate my oath and, and, and you know, translate it into common English. He just said, I'm a lying scumbag and you should never trust me. So oh, I would. think that, that that line is in the Quran two places. Yeah. That line that Muhammad has welched on his oath, it appears in the Quran twice. Now, let me, let me uh, remind uh, the, our listeners. This Muslim guy, the professor at DePaul University, quoted the Quran 2191 to say that, mo that oppression is worse than murder. Now, you read that in context, folks. Muhammad is beginning his anti-Semitic rant in the second surah. Muhammad has been told that he has to flee Mecca now, because he got caught with the satanic verses. The Quraysh in Mecca accused Muhammad of inventing his God Allah and inventing his religion purely to satiate his lust for sex, power, and money. And so they said, okay, Muhammad, will give you what you want. All you have to do is acknowledge all of these 360 gods that are sitting around the Kaaba and incorporate our religion into your religion and acknowledge the little goddesses and we'll give you what you want. We'll give you sex. We'll give you the prettiest girls. We'll give you all of the money you want and we'll call you cocaine just to stop harassing us. Muhammad accepted it. There's Quran. But they call the satanic verses where Muhammad acknowledges the other little girly rocks that are around the Kaaba. And he's booted out of town now as a laughingstock for having four gods and goddesses in his supposed monotheistic religion. And in the middle of that, he imagines that he rode a winged ass to Jerusalem <laughs> to visit the, uh, the non-existing temple. In the midst of that, he then goes to Yathrib, which is two-thirds Jewish, three-quarters Jewish. And there he becomes anti-Semitic. The line that, he, that this idiot quoted, oppression is worse than murder, was at the Jews. He says that the Jews, they're oppressing us. And I'll tell you how he claimed the Jews were oppressing them. And that, therefore, it was okay for the Muslims to murder them because oppression was worse than murder. That the Jews who were oppressing should be murdered. We'll be back in a moment. Yes, according to the Muslim guy, um, the Quran states quite clearly, quote, oppression is worse than murder, unquote. Quran 2, 191. Well, I've just told you the context of the second surah of the Quran. Let's uh, pick up the story here uh, around uh, 2, 171. The Quran says the semblance of the infidels. This would be uh, the infidels uh, he's now speaking of as uh, Jews, the three quarters of the community of, uh, of uh, Yathrib, today's Medina. 
is one who shouts to one who cannot hear. They are deaf, they are dumb, they are blind, they make no sense. It says those who conceal Allah's revelations in their scripture book and thus make a miserable prophet thereby swallow fire into themselves. What he's saying there is that that, that the Jews in Yathrib, the, the rabbis in particular, sold Muhammad's Talmud readings. Because Muhammad just ran out of material. So Muhammad would go to them and and pay them to recite the Talmud to him. Muhammad would then twist those stories to su- suit his interests. But the Jews charged him for it. And after a while, Muhammad didn't want to pay anymore. So he's talking about how these Jews made a miserable prophet selling him the Talmud stories. That's what he's saying here. Then he speaks of the ransom of captives to be to be steadfast in their devotional obligations, paying the Zakat tax. That's two uh, one seventy seven. Two one seventy eight. Retaliation is prescribed for you in the matter of the murdered, the free for free, the slave for slave, the female for female. He goes on, now this is a 2190, we're getting really close, right, to uh, 2191? 2190. Now you think this Islamic lawyer, this guy who presents himself as the great scholar who has spoken at all these great universities, do you think that this Islamic scholar doesn't know what Quran 2190 says? It reads, fight in Allah's cause, those who fight you, but do not transgress the limits. For Allah uh, liked not the transgressors. The uh, Noble Quran says, this is the first verse revealed in connection with jihad, and it was supplemented by the ninth surah. In other words, the law of abrogation in the Quran uh, has changed this verse because Muhammad uh, is in his Quran in the ninth surah says, fight them all. No matter where you find him, no matter when you find him, lie in wait for him. Use all the weapons that you can muster and fight and kill them forever. So the the only fight them uh, who fight you was abrogated to fight them all the time, anywhere, everywhere. And so Quran, uh, the uh, the the uh, source of the of most Qurans, the Saad Foundation has. Uh, brought our attention to that. Then here's Quran 2.191. Now, he only quoted from it, oppression is worse than murder, right? To appear that, that the Quran was opposed to oppression, calling it worse than murder. Here's what 191 then says. After saying, fight in all his cause, those who fight you, it says, and kill them. Wherever you find them and catch them, and drive them out, from where they have turned you out. For al-fitna, polytheism, disbelief, and oppression, is worse than slaughter. He knows that the very verse that he cited said exactly the opposite of what he was inferring. Rather than saying oppression is worse than murder, what it's saying here is that you ought to go murder these Jews, fight and kill them wherever you find them. Because what they have done, al-fitna, their polytheism, their disbelief, their unwillingness to surrender to Islam is worse than you slaughtering them. Your slaughtering them is better than them not submitting to you. Stunning. I mean, if that doesn't cause your... Your mouth to just go open in a wide gaping, oh my God, this guy whose testimony appeared in this article by CNN, who has been the keynote spokesman at almost every major university in this country, who has spoken using the media mouthpiece of almost every major network in this country, just took a snippet of a line to convey exactly the opposite point that the Quran was making. Now let's go to his second one. And that nobody, the Holy Quran says that nobody shall force girls to commit prostitution. 
Quran 2433. Now, he didn't tell you the end of, uh, of that verse. And let me tell you why he didn't tell you the end of Quran 2433 and 34. There's a reason he didn't want you to know the end of it. Because, yes, it begins, force not your slave girls into Horeb. So, he, first of all, he removed slave girls because he can't make his point that you can't kidnap little girls if this says, force not your slave girls. But that's how it begins. Force not your slave girls. Not, shall not force girls. Force not your slave girls. He knows it. Force not your slave girls into whoredom. If, if, if they desire chastity. I, if they want to be whores, there's no problem. You can force them into being prostitutes. If they desire chastity, that you may seek enjoyment of this life. And then here's your freedom to pimp card. But if anyone forces them into prostitution, <laughs> Allah is oft forgiving. He didn't quote the end of that, did he? You know why I didn't quote the end of it? Because it says, you can force your slaves, your captives, into prostitution. Because Allah doesn't care. Allah's forgiving. He's not going to be bothered with you forcing your girls into prostitution. He quoted two lines. Both of them actually say the opposite of what he communicated. Well, it sounds like he's trying to cover up there. I mean, you know, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's got, it's called a lie when you tell a half-truth. You know? By the way, he didn't even bother to quote one to support this. They must have also missed the numerous times that the Prophet Muhammad categorically stated during his life that women and children were never to be harmed under any circumstance. Islam was conceived on the basis of harming women. Muslim sure, fighters they, became they, they, fighters they, they, because they were rewarded with sex. Yeah, the right. they got to go kill everybody, and they take the booty, and the booty was really the women and the, and yes. the children. And they were told that men had absolute dominion over women's bodies, that they were property. That is what caused Islam to flourish, and he knows it. Muhammad also had women who spoke against him murdered. There's story after story of a, of a woman strong enough, wise enough to speak out against Muhammad, he would have his goons go in in the middle of the night, even with children sleeping around the mother, and murder them. One time when his uh, goons built, uh, uh, murdered a, uh, a, uh, a woman poet, and they said, gosh, I mean, we're feeling kind of guilty about this, Muhammad. I mean, she had an infant that was nursing on her breast as we did this. And he says, oh, Allah doesn't care. It's like... Two rams Two butting heads. Butting heads. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. I read that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he did. Think nothing yeah. of it. She had like five children. She was a journalist that told the truth about yeah. them. Yeah. Can you yeah, imagine that story? This, yeah. Yes, right there. This yeah, Arsalam yeah. Iftahar, as a professor of DePaul University, speaking on all of those major United States media outlets. You know that he's also they've given keynote speeches and guest lectures at Harvard University, Stanford University, Georgetown, John Hopkins University, University of Pennsylvania, the University Northwestern University, the University of Chicago, Brown University, University of Michigan School of Law, George Washington University, Cornell University, and it what goes does on that and on. Tell you about all these uh, universities that we taxpayers fund. They are as big a part of the problem as is the Muslim guy as is Boko Haram. They're all in the same situation. You can paint them with the same brush. There is very little difference between being a rapist, being a slave trader, being a terrorist, as Boko Haram is, and those who, who uh, exonerate the religion that causes them to do these things. There is well, very little difference. I, I, people should be up in arms, uh, you know, and, as you are. Right. This, this man should be fired from DePaul University. Every one of those universities should have at the top banner of their website, we're sorry. Now that we've read this article, now that we've read those 
is those Quranic quotes in context, now that we've read all of what was actually said there, and we know that he is a deceiver, that we are writing an apology to everyone who has gone to this university, to everyone who has donated to this university, and to those that attended these speeches made by this disgusting man. The reason they won't post that is because they would be lying. The reason that they would be lying is because they will never take the time to read the verses before and after and put it in context and admit that they really have no idea what they're doing. You know, and, and this goes on and on in, in, in the public school systems today and the university systems today. It's, uh, it's, it's just another rat hole that reminds me of, of religion. Yeah, but and the reason why I say that the problem today is not just religion. Yes, the religion of Islam is reprehensible. Yes, the religion of Islam is solely responsible for 99.9% .9 of the world's terrorist acts, for the mutilation of tens of millions of little girls, for the honor killings of tens of thousands of little girls, for this particular kidnap, the rape and torture and forced conversion of these girls. Islam is solely responsible for all of that. Yes, religion is rotten. But you know, so are the politicians who won't speak out against this religion. So are the academic institutions, these universities that are promoting this lie about Islam. And so are all of the media sources that gave this man voice. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we're up against here. That's why we have a show here called Shattering Myths we listen to, because these myths are exposed on this show. But you know, we are uh, a voice calling, crying out in the wilderness. There are far too few people who are willing to listen, who are willing to shed their ignorance, who are willing to exercise good judgment, who are willing to show a backbone and to stand up courageously for the truth. It is astonishing. We have reached a point where liars are celebrated. This man the Muslim guy, he didn't just happen to make a little mistake. He's not conveying something that he genuinely believes, but he just wasn't fully informed. He knows for fact that the two citations that he used actually convey the opposite of what he claims. He knows it. That's why he took both statements out of context. That's why he didn't give you the whole verse on either statement. Because one verse is encouraging Muslims to go off and fight and kill Jews wherever they find them. And saying that their slaughtering of Jews is appropriate because the Jews wouldn't surrender to them. That's what they're saying. And the other one said, oh, you can have your slave girls and, and force them into prostitution. When he says that you can't enslave an Islam and, and you can't force girls into prostitution. He knows for certain, because he, just to take the snippets that he mistranslated and misrepresented out of those Quranic verses, he had to see the rest of the verse. He knows it. He knows that he is lying on behalf of the religion that motivated this Islamic cleric to kidnap these little girls, to rape them, and now to sell them as sex slaves. You know, I mean, it would take a boob to think otherwise. Why Why do they think, why do people who put such a man on a stage think yeah. that, that laws are in place in places like Saudi Arabia where a, a girl gets raped, mm -hmm. and for getting raped, she gets thrown in prison and beaten? 
Yeah. What, what yeah. And, why, and why is that the ubiquitous treatment of all rape victims throughout the Islamic world if it is, in fact, not in the Quran where they, uh, uh, they are treated this way? Is, if it's not the Quran and not the Hadith and not Sharia law that is causing the victims of rape to be incarcerated, to be whipped, and to be stoned to death, then right. where, pray tell, are they getting all of this and why are they all the same? Right. You know, it's one of the things I've said a long time ago. I said, you know, I've taken 10,000 hours to study the uh, the five earliest Islamic uh, scriptural sources, and I took the time to to take them, the jumbled mess of the Quran, and to put it in your chronological order, using the Hadith to provide the context that the Quran lacks, so that you can actually understand what is being said to whom and why. Having read that, it is it's astonishing. It's astonishing. Yeah, that it is. anyone could 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 follow this tripe. Yes, I mean it's all the religion is from start to finish. It is. Yes, it is. I'm going to tell you that that green eggs and ham is far more sensible. So is one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. But yeah, Doctor Seuss has nothing on these guys. Oh man. So, <laughs> but 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 you don't even have to do that. You don't even have to spend the 50 hours that it would take to read the thousand pages of evidence from the Islamic scriptural sources in Prophet of Doom. Don't even have to invest that 50 hours. All you've got to do is open your eyes. Look at the countries, the 50 countries where Muslims represent the majority of that country. Just look at them. Look how depraved they are, how backward they are, how sadistic they are, how, how repulsive they are. And you really know it's, it's, that is sufficient to know about Islam. You know, in the Beverly Hills Hotel, there's a big uh, article again that Hollywood stars are boycotting the Beverly Hills Hotel and even its polo lounge because the Sultan of Brunei, who owns it, is going to impose Sharia law. And there's only one reason: because uh, buried in the edicts of Sharia law are uh, are um, stoning to death are for uh, homosexuals. Oh, that's the only problem. They that's have. the only. That's the only problem. You're they, yeah, Jay, Jay Leno uh, came out, and uh, and Helen DeGeneres uh, came out uh, the uh, just today, and said, you know, we're not going there anymore. No more polo lounge for us, because uh, the Sultan of Brunei owns the Beverly Hills Hotel, and uh, in Sharia law, there'll be penalties for homosexuality, and that was enough for them. Ignorant buffoons. Gosh, we have created a world where the advocates of lies are touted, are proclaimed, are given huge honors. They're invited to speak before large audiences. And yet those who wield the truth are unwelcome. 